This will be a refresher on how memory works. We'll look at pointers and addresses because it's going to be important to understanding the differences between linked lists and arrays. Both of these data structures will be used to implement many of our more complex abstract data types. So essentially, memory is just storage. Storage like in your hard drive or your RAM. The difference is that storing and retrieving data in RAM is a lot faster than your hard drive. But hard drive storage is persistent, meaning that if you turn off your computer, the data will still be there. But the data stored in RAM is volatile, meaning that if you turn off your computer, everything in there will also be gone. Just think of RAM as a temporary space for your computer to work in. For example, when we run a program that we've written, the variables in the code will be stored in RAM so that they can quickly be retrieved whenever it's needed. But when you turn your computer off, all those variables that were on the temporary workspace would be gone as well. What is a byte? We usually describe the amount of memory in terms of bytes. So for example, my computer has 32 gigabytes of memory. That's a lot of bytes. And then each of those bytes contains eight bits of storage. And finally, that one bit is just a state. It can be either zero or one. Because we're so smart as humans, we figured out a way to represent so many things in the world with just a series of zeros and ones. For example, how many numbers can you represent with one byte? Now one byte of memory has eight bits. You can actually represent 256 different states with that. For example, I can call this configuration as one, and then this configuration is, let's say 100, and then this configuration would be 204. There's actually a logic behind that, but we'll talk about that later. What about characters? How do you think I can represent characters? Well, that's easy. If you map numbers to characters, then we can just say that the number 97 is A, and 98 is B, and 99 is C, etc. And that is what we call ASCII character code, where numbers are mapped to letters. So that means this byte is the letter A, and this byte is the letter H. All right, so now you know how we store information in memory. How do we access them? Well, the smallest accessible unit of memory is a byte. That's just how processors are built. They read eight bits at a time. That's why we package them up to a byte. We usually deal with bytes, not individual bits. Each byte has to be somewhere in memory, AKA it has a position in memory. And that position has an address. And to access that byte, we need that address. For example, if you have one megabyte of memory, the address of the first byte is zero, and the last address is 1,048,575. So for reference, one kilobyte is 1,024 bytes, and one megabyte is 1,024 kilobytes. So that means that one megabyte is 1,024 times 1,024, which is 1,048,576 bytes. Since we start at address zero, then the last address is 1,048,576 minus one. Just like how an array of size six, the last index is six minus one, which is five. Each position or address stores one byte of information, AKA eight bits. Note that memory addresses are usually represented in hexadecimal. So one megabyte of memory, the address of the first byte is zero X zero, and the address of the last byte is zero X F F F F F. Some data types require more memory than others. For example, a typical integer is usually four bytes long, while a character in a string only takes one byte. So if you have a list of four numbers, you would use up 16 bytes of memory. For this course, you actually don't need to know precisely how many bytes each data type occupies because we'll be only looking at memory usage in terms of space complexity, which is similar to time complexity, but instead of time, it's space in memory. Here's a quick example on how linked list looks like versus arrays. If we define a variable and assign it the value four, the value will live in the memory and it'll take up space. If we define an array of size five with the value zero, one, two, three, four in there, your program will reserve a contiguous memory space of five elements to store them. Linked lists are a little bit different and we'll go over them in the linked list lesson, 
but I want to give you a little preview. If we create one node in the linked list, we need two blocks of space because one of them will contain the value and the other will be the address of the next node. For now, the address here is zero because it's a single element linked list. Let's say this is a linked list of size five with number zero, one, two, three, four, the same length as our array, but with a linked list. This is what it could look like in memory. And if we look closely at each node, you'll notice that they contain a value and also an address, which leads to the next node. And that is how they're linked together. We usually call this a node pointer because it's an address pointing to another node. All right. So far, we talked about what a byte is and how we access it. We also learned how to calculate the number of addresses of a one megabyte memory and also looked at different ways of memory allocation in arrays and linked lists. All right, so now you have a high level view of how your programs interact with memory. You're now ready to tackle other data structures. All right, I'll see you in the next one.